Hey guys, how's it going? It is week 17 on DraftKings and I have an absolutely special final cage match of the season just for you. We've brought the godfather of fantasy, Matthew Barry, shield agent thug number four. Just give me the box, Mr. Star. No, 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 shield agent. I was shield agent. <laughs> just I, I shield don't agent? To me. There were like five I of y'all there. There was, I, there's one, watch the scene, there's one. I had a whole phalanx and army behind me, but there's one, and you look at the credits, when you stay to the credits, like it says shield agent. I'm not shield agent number three, I'm not shield agent number six, I'm shield agent. So there you go. And honestly, like, hey, spoiler alert, I might've been Hydra as well, but that's yes. not in the credits. More than probably yeah. Hydra agent as well. As you can tell behind the scenes, Matthew shouting at me from behind, the curtain. We're going to be playing for charity in this cage match. For those of you who play head-to-heads on DraftKings, you know that you're going to end up with a lot of overlap with whoever it is that you're playing against, but not in this cage match. We do this draft style with the salaries on DraftKings, uh, and we play for charity. 100% of the ad revenue raised by this video every single Wednesday is going to be donated to No Kid Hungry. I'm going to do that later today after I get this video edited. Uh, so... No Kid Hungry is going to win no matter whether I win or lose. We're going to be playing for $100. Uh, and we'll talk about the charity that Matthew's playing for in just a second. But why don't I bring him in since he's basically already here anyway. Matthew, how are you doing today, man? You know what? I'm good. I'm good, Al. I appreciate this. I appreciate you having me on uh, your little uh, your little Twitch. I'm very excited to make my Twitch debut. I believe this is my Twitch, my Twitch debut. It um, is. Uh, Excited, uh, excited to uh, to finally do this. I know you and I have talked about this. We've been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this uh, for a long time. And I just want everyone to know that is watching this on YouTube. We had a whole conversation prior just on Twitch. And uh, Al's like, he's like, oh, my mods are already catching. Al has mods. Like, who knew <laughs> Al? Like, you know what I have? I have Thirsty Kyle. Like, that's all I have. I have Thirsty Kyle who's busy sending long emails about fantasy basketball leagues you have no idea and like i got no one you've got mods you've got a whole setup here al it's insane to me like i'm just i'm just a guy with a phone you've got a whole you've got a whole setup a whole studio you've got mods like do you think i even get within 100 points of you in this thing yes yeah yes. i don't know i'm, I'm eight and six on the year but i'm zero and two against oh six oh one oh candidates so far i lost to dop and i lost to clay and so They've already warned me that if I lose to you, I'm in a lot of trouble on the CSS DFS podcast. They may not get asked Rightfully back next so. Year. Rightfully so. Not only, <laughs> not only if you lose to me, we talked about this before. Not only if you lose to me, do you have to give up? Um, do you have to give up Los Angeles? Do you have to give up your whole <laughs> Twitch? I get, I get, I literally get your Twitch channel. I get your YouTube channel. I get the whole empire. I get the whole Smiz Life empire. Um, TMR Life has a nice ring to it. But beyond that. <laughs> Beyond that, I believe I get to take your place on the DFS CSS. Um, you know, I get to, uh, you know, yeah. Right? You know, I, mean, I just... And I what think do I, what, if I win, what do I get? Uh, I don't so know. Like what do you we're want? paying for pink slips, but what do I get? What do you want? Name I don't, it. <laughs> I don't know. Do you I don't care. <laughs> right, you want my job? Yeah, I have my job. <laughs> like, I'm done. <laughs> you know what I want? I want that one little you know segment on Fantasy Football Now. I want my one out. little segment on Fantasy Football Now. Five minutes. Let's go to Al in Los Angeles. Talk about some plays on DraftKings for the week. It's fine with me. It's fine. Stupid Mike Clay. <laughs> Matthew's Mike like Clay me. Mike stealing all your thunder. And I don't have a decision. You know, we'll talk to Matt Harrington, who produces Fantasy Football Now. I, I, I'm happy to – I'm more than happy to go to the mat and say, like, listen <laughs> – Screw Mike Clay. We got to bring <laughs> Allen in. He beat me in the cage match. Although, I mean, honestly, you lost head to head to Mike. Like, I don't really have right. a lot. See, to now I've with. got no, I've got no foot to stand on here. No, <laughs> it's brutal. I here's what you can do. How about I, I'm going to let you write a year's worth of love hate. How about that? Lovely. I love it's writing. Fantastic. Five thousand words. <laughs> hate it's writing. due Wednesday night. Um, just you know, seventeen straight weeks. Is that cool? No. <laughs> Oh, all right. I can't stand writing, and I've I've written my article for six years now at ESPN, two thousand words a week, and I can't stand it. Yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. a slog. Make no mistake about it. All right, how about um, uh, I could get you an autographed copy of Fantasy Life. Okay, let's see if we. Yeah, like you know people. Let's see if we can work that out. All right. Well, you decide what you want if you beat me, which I'm sure you're going to. Nope. Uh, you know. 
<laughs> it's week 17. Literally yeah. anything can happen. We are anything playing can. for two charities. Matthew, obviously, is going to be playing for the V Foundation. One team for victory over cancer. Uh, you can see he's got his Booyah shirt on today uh, for Stuart Scott as well. I will be playing, as always, for No Kid Hungry, trying to help kids during school closures and all year long uh, to keep kids who are food insecure to get them as, as much help as they can possibly get during this football season and beyond. Uh, so Matthew, you have chosen to pick second and two. You've left me the first pick. We're playing for a hundred dollars. Yep. Sure. All right. So let's see. A hundred dollars and your life. A hundred dollars I mean, and everything else. <laughs> We're playing for pink slips apparently here in week 16. Right. So week 16. What about is an kids? <laughs> my, my kids are driving me crazy. You want to trade kids? You like, got you girls. Play for your kids? life's so much easier. Your life's so much easier. <laughs> I got two boys, ten and eight. Like, I'll, Dude, okay. How about we trade until got, like, until your girls are like thirteen? Then we got to trade yeah. back. Right. No. No. Listen. I got a twenty-two-year-old just out of college in the worst economy in history. That's not good. I got a. I got a sophomore in college. I, I got a soft. I'm sorry. I got a junior in college. Uh, I got a. I got a sophomore in high school, and then I got twin girls that are nine years old in, th in third grade. I got third grade problems. I got high school teenage boy problems. I got college kid problems during a pandemic and I got just out of college graduating the worst economy in a hundred years problems. So listen, actually I'll, I'll make the deal right now. You got two <laughs> boys that are a little ambunctious, send them over to me. Are you kidding me? I'll you make that trade right now. You can't handle my kids. Oh, you can't handle the truth. You can't All right, handle my let's kids. Let's all Stop right. Stalling. I'm on a time delay. No, You're, you got a hard out here. I got a hard out. In 35 minutes. So we're going to have to yeah. zip through this. Something that you're known yeah. for, Matthew, is being extremely sure. expedient and, and well kept yeah. with your time. Yes, sir. While on air. So the first player that I'm going to pick here, I'm going to go for value. You leave me the number one pick, I'm going to take the best value on the board, and that's going to be Malcolm Brown from Los Angeles Rams. Every other running back is not available for the Rams on this slate. As much as everybody who watches my content knows that I don't trust Sean McVay, uh, there's nobody else for him to play with here at running back. So he can't jerk us around by just playing somebody else inside the five. I'm sure he's going to give like Tyler Higby a carry if they get inside the five against Arizona. Pace up situation, very low risk and opens up what I need on the rest of my roster. So give me Malcolm Brown as much as I can't stand dealing with Sean McVay's whims once they get into the red zone and inside the five. Uh, 16 to 20 carries here from Malcolm Brown, extremely likely. Uh, and that's all I need for 4,300. Yeah. You know what? I, I, he was on my list. He was, uh, Good. he was on my list. I was hoping <laughs> you weren't going to go there. I thought about taking the number one pick just to take him, but what are you going to do? Um, that I'm living the Smiz life. There you go. I've already lost. Should we even, should we just call it a day now? You want to do All right. Thanks for coming everybody. Before. Appreciate you. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, there you go. It's fine um 100 so uh let's see you know what i'm gonna go uh let's see i will take a i will take a running back as well mm -hmm. uh let me think about this um you know what i don't love him either um yeah, well listen uh anytime you can um spend a lot of money um i think you got to do it right like yeah. that's that's the whole point of DraftKings is is um is trying to uh uh spend money here yeah so i'm gonna here's what i do i'm gonna i'm gonna go uh let's see oh i should do it on my i'll do it on my phone here hang on yeah put it right into the, first, uh, the old head to head uh first one i'm gonna go is uh i'm going uh i'm gonna go melvin gordon okay here. mg3 so, good pick MG3, I like Melvin Gordon. He's uh, he's only fifty seven hundred dollars, um, so I think that's a you know pretty good price here. He's playing Vegas. Last four weeks, Raiders allow one hundred sixty one rushing yards per game, uh, five point four yards per carry. I don't expect Phil Lindsay to play in this game as well. So you know, listen, we just saw Miles Gaskin run all over the Raiders. I like uh, Melvin Gordon here for fifty seven hundred, mm -hmm. and I believe. Oh, you know what? Even though we are out of Dehember, give me Derrick Henry. I'm going to take Derrick Henry. I'm going to pay up for Derrick Henry, $9,400. You 
you know, 139 scrim. Uh, you know, it, he's playing Houston, right? So, um, <laughs> do we need any ahead. more analysis than look? He's playing uh, Houston. He's playing Houston. I mean, most fantasy points, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns to running backs allowed. My assumption is that Derrick Henry is going to be big chalk this week, right? Mm-hmm. I assume it's going to be big chalk this week, and normally I wouldn't do it, but all I'm doing is playing you head to head. Don't have so to be faster than the bear. Head, I'm sorry, what? You don't have to be faster than the bear. You just got to be faster right. than me. That's exactly right. And as everyone knows, you are a you are a, literally at best a mid round grade school basketball pick. So <laughs> I just got to be faster than you. Give me some Derrick Henry. It's a solid pick. I like Derrick Henry a lot. I like all the the really expensive running backs this week. Every every high dollar running back is in an, a ridiculous dream matchup. Uh, solid start for you with two high volume running backs there. Um, let's see where else we're gonna go. Back to me with one, and I'm gonna go with a volume guy here. I'm gonna go with Curtis Samuel, who's been getting tremendous volume both with uh, rush attempts and through the air recently. Uh, what's that 28 targets in the last four games still only 5.3 they just don't want to move his price up I suppose Uh, 100 yards receiving last week big time big splash ability and a good floor of volume for only 5300 Uh, solid play here for me I like him at wide receiver he's one of the better value plays on the board going out there this week now there's a lot at stake this week it's week 17 the slate's going to change by the time kickoff comes on sunday somebody's going to throw a big party on new year's eve and get their whole wide receiver running back quarterback room disqualified for the week and we already have ben roethlisberger sitting uh and and the steelers saying they're going to sit some players moving lines all over the place but curtis samuel i don't think is going to have anything that affects his current expected volume for the week and i believe he's a little bit too cheap so i'm going to go with a second value pick here and plug him in at wide receiver all right you're shaving a lot of money. I don't like that. Uh, I'm going to go, but I will go to wide receiver as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take Michael Gallup, just $5,000, who scored in three of the last four games. He's actually led the team, I believe, in targets over the last four weeks. Since Andy Dalton came back from injury, he's actually led the team in targets. My expectation here is that James Bradbury uh, shadows Amari Cooper, which might open up some more work here for Michael Gallup. So Gallup, I think at five thousand dollars is a pretty good value. I'm uh, I'm going with Michael Gallup. He's been doing extremely well. Like everything that he was somebody that I was really high on through draft season, and obviously it didn't materialize. Yes. One because of all the weapons that they had early in the season. Two after Dak broke himself, uh, it, everything kind of went off the rails with the carousel of quarterbacks that they had before they got to Andy Dalton after that concussion. But he's really come on of late, kind of proving why people were picking him in those fifth through seventh rounds of drafts this uh this draft season so solid pick there uh i'm gonna do something i don't normally do and it's because of something that i had just mentioned there are certain positions obviously if you take a quarterback the other person in the cage doesn't have to take a quarterback it frees them up from having to do that same thing goes for defense usually it happens at tight end i think twice this year we've seen a, a tight end at flex but i'm gonna take a defense here because i think that there's one defense that's far beyond basically any other defense right now based on their price, their expectation. And the one thing that has changed on this slate, Ben Roethlisberger out, Mason Rudolph is in, and the Browns do put an awful lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. That is the one thing that leads to more defensive scoring than anything. The Browns are now 10-point favorites in this game. Pittsburgh uh, has really talented wide receivers, but can Rudolph get them the ball? Uh, I think he's going to be completely under siege from this Browns front seven. Uh, so at 2,500, I'm going to plug in the Browns defense again. Something I don't normally do is lock in a defense until like my last pick, but I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do a thing here a little bit differently with the TMR on the show. I like it that you have to switch up your whole strategy. You've been doing this dumb thing for like 16 weeks and suddenly I show up and you're like, I got I got in your head. I've already gotten in your head so much. Understand like you've looked at the slate, like you live this. Like I literally, I opened up the app 10 minutes before we got on the air. You see, he wants people... to act like a rube, but yesterday, or yesterday, Matthew's like, look, hey, Al, I can't make the normal time that's right in your schedule. Can we do it at 5 a.m. your time, please? Yeah, look, the fact <laughs> is, yeah, because I'm a busy guy. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I got like I got stuff to do. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> I got to go be on TV. I'm sorry, you know, no offense to Twitch, but I actually have to go be on TV. I got to do know, that tomorrow. Uh, yeah. I'm, on the, well, I'm on the focus podcast the one with your picture on the frame and i gotta yeah. be there doing video tomorrow morning i know 
I'm not there tomorrow. Yeah, it's somebody's uh, day off with a lot of stuff to do. I'm exactly right. <laughs> I got stuff to do. It's the whole point. All right. So, um, all right. Well, so now I don't have to worry about. Uh, I don't have to worry about defense. Nope. Um, and you, you know, know what? Nor oh, oh boy, maybe I do. Um, <laughs> you know what's interesting though is I'm going to do something that I'm guessing you're not supposed to do either, which is. Uh, you know, hang on for a second. Um, let me think about this. Um, Take your time. In Talk terms your way of, uh, mm, um, I'm gonna go. I, I like the pick, by the way. They they were on my list. Uh, they were on my list quite a bit. Um, but I'm gonna do something that I'm also I'm, I, I don't think I'm supposed to do. Okay. But I'm going to go with a quarterback. Same thing. Right? Okay. The, the single position players, you normally like to wait till the end, right? Because now you don't you can wait till the very end to pick a quarterback. Same like now I, I can wait till the end to do a defense. Mm -hmm. So normally I don't like to do so I had planned to wait, but how this is sort of going, I want to lock in some value. And so okay. you know, uh, and I like locking in value at quarterback. And so there's one guy that I think is still underpriced, and that's Kirk Cousins. And so Kirk Cousins, um, you know, Kirk Cousins obviously has been red hot. Did you know that Kirk Cousins, uh, I believe over the last six weeks, is the sixth best quarterback in fantasy? He's been very good. He's been very, very good. And now he's at Detroit, um, who have allowed over 30 fantasy points to quarterbacks in four of the past five games. And so uh, I believe Kirk Cousins <laughs> finished strong and – I'll uh, I'll just leave it at that. So whatever. So yeah, I'm I, I think he's I think he's very undervalued at 6,300 for quarterback. So I wanted to sort of lock in that value there. I like it. He's one of my best buys this week. Uh, there's I think there's a lot of quarterbacks that are 7K and up that are viable. Uh, and then yeah. in the mid 6K range, there's like Kirk Cousins, and then you got to go to like the super duper value guys that make you feel a little bit queasy when you pick them. So. Uh, they have like one of the highest uh, Detroit has one of the highest touchdown percentages allowed this year in the, in the league. He's got three touchdowns in like five of his last seven games, something ridiculous like that. Uh, and two very talented wide receivers and very consolidated or condensed target tree. So like, you know where the ball is going. It's going to Thielen. It's going to Jefferson. It's going to Irv. Uh, and yeah, sometimes exactly. to Delvin. so, and so since week 11, by the way, I just looked mm -hmm. this up uh, since week 11, on a per game basis, Kirk Cousins is fourth in completion, fourth in touchdown passes, mm -hmm. sixth in passing yards since week 11. So we, we're dealing with a decent sample size here. And again, like they're playing Detroit. So, yes. Um, uh, so yeah, so pretty good there. And to your point, you know, I'll just, I'll just say this, right. To your point, you just mentioned like it's a very narrow target tree for Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. And because we're doing this one-to-one -one thing, it makes me think, Oh, you know what? Like, even if you go with Jefferson or Thielen here or Irv, whatever, there's stack options for me with Kirk Cousins coming up. 100%. Uh, all of yeah. those things are viable for you. I'm going to lock in a superstar here. And it's... Other than me? Other than... Oh, yeah. Bang! <laughs> uh, it could be a running back. I could go with Dalvin yeah. Cook and kind of leverage against your... Uh, Leverage against yeah. your play there and say, look, you've got this guy. I'm going to take this guy, and we're going to see which one gets yeah. uh, all the touchdowns because that's what's going to determine the winner. But Devontae Adams is just so good. He really is. Yeah, he's quite good. And I've heard of him. I, at least once. So yeah. considering this is a game that they should be getting after a little bit, this is a spot where Devontae Adams should get another 10 targets. Yes, it's a tough defense, of course, uh, but his floor is that of a really high volume running back. A target is worth 2.7 carries. He's been getting like 10 targets a game pretty much every single game that he's played, especially over the last month where he's gotten 10 twice and 12 twice. 10 plus targets, definitely an expectation here. All of the red zone and end zone usage you can handle for 9,200. Ridiculous floor because of his usage in the passing game and slate breaking ability like we've seen three times already this season and twice last season. Uh, so I'm going to lock in Devontae Adams against the Bears at 9,200, leaving me 5,700 plus the rest of my roster. All right. But how much do you have left? I got 28,700 average of 5,740. 
Yeah, I have 23,800 with like 4,700. Um, 23,600. Like 40... Yeah. Huh? You have yeah. 23,600. Yeah, I have 23,600. So I don't have, I don't have a lot. But you have a defense, um, which is going to make that average and, remaining per player. Goal. And I'm going to go cheap here too. Again, I'm I'm doing dumb stuff, right? I'm Always. doing dumb. What do I know? Always I'm do noob. dumb stuff. I'm a I'm a rube. I'm like I'm one of these fish that you guys all talk about. You sharks come in and eat me up. Um, but uh, so once again, I'm going to same thing. I'm going to go single. I'm going to go uh, with a a single position, and I'm going to go to tight end, and I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go to Irv Smith. So, because Irv Smith, $3,900, Lions allowed the second most fantasy points to tight ends over the last four weeks. T now, I've, now I've paired him with Cousins. So now I've you got your stack. Tight end. Now I've got a stack, cheap. Now, it's now again, it's a quarterback and tight end, so I've left those two positions to you. You don't have to do that until the very end. But I like that because now, like, I'll go cheap on defense, and now I can spend a little bit more money. I'm not worried about whatever your next pick will be. Yeah, you've locked in your cousins to Irv Smith stack. Irv Smith's gotten a lot more targets with Rudolph kind of yep. being the elf on the shelf throughout December. He went from Rudolph the Red Zone Ranger to Rudolph on the shelf, uh, and Irv has really taken a big step forward recently. Um, so let's see where I'm going to go here. There's a there. bunch of different things that I can do. There's some things that I can't do. I'm going to take a look at tight end. Go ahead, take a tight end. I'm going to take yeah. a tight end. I'm blocked, but I don't care because I think that I can check it back to you. Uh, you know what? Just like you went with Devontae Adams, why not go with Travis Kelsey this week? I could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go with Evan Ingram. Going against the fantasy <laughs> carnival that is the Dallas footballing Cowboys. Um, right. Evan Ingram's gotten a whole lot of targets. 10, 7, 8, 3 of the last four weeks. Uh, yes, I know that he failed the first time that they played, but they've gotten him a lot more involved. For 3700 it's ex it's just way too cheap for the volume that he gets and the heightened touchdown expectation going up against uh, the Cowboys. This is a spot where... Has there ever been a team... This is kind of an aside that has nothing to do with Evan Ingram analysis, but like, has there ever been a team that could either win their division or get the th number three pick in the draft in Week 17? Like, that wide a spread of possible outcomes? It's really, it's in, it's really insane. It's absurd. Cool. Uh, it's absurd. But here we are. It's the most 2020 of expectations. So I'm going to go with Evan Ingram here <clears throat> at 3,700 going up against the Cowboys. Leaving me with 6,200 left. I think that there are specific guys that I want that I believe that I can get the rest of the way. Um, and I like where I'm sitting. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go wide receiver here. And... I'm looking at, I'm looking at, hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with Calvin Ridley. You know, here's a He's guy when Julio's out. He averages 24.4 uh, fantasy points in terms of DraftKings. Mm -hmm. He's averaging 119 receiving yards per game when Julio's out. Buccaneers face the second highest pass rate in the nfl believe it or not the falcons fifth most pass heavy team in the nfl over the last four weeks mm -hmm. uh including when they faced the buccaneers previously ridley went 10 for 163 and a touchdown on 14 targets we expect the buccaneers to you know uh, this is an important game for the buccaneers we expect them to put up points here so yeah even even last week against the chiefs in what was sort of a lower scoring game ridley still put up points so I think Ridley has a, a really nice floor in a potential shootout here. So give me, uh, so give me Ridley. Ridley's Calvin been, Ridley. He's been the one player on the Falcons that when Julio Jones is out, Matt Ryan's numbers just go right into the tank. He's been the yeah. one player who's been able to fight through that Julio less Matt Ryan inefficiency without yeah. a hiccup at all. Now we'll see if Julio can come back. Julio is claiming he wants to play. Of course well, he wants to play. To him. I sort of don't think he will. So it's a little bit of a hedge because we're doing this on a Wednesday morning, godforsaken Wednesday morning. Why we can't do this like on a Sunday morning or even a Saturday, like normal human beings when everyone else sets the lineups, I don't know. But whatever, it's Al's rules, just, you know, trying to, he brings people in, brings like, you know, whatever, a noob like me <laughs> just to try to embarrass me in front of 
his massive Twitch audience. Um, but all right, yeah, fine. I'll I go love with... the sandbag. You're you're the talented Mr. Yeah. Sandbag. It's true. I am. <laughs> I am. Listen, listen, Al. What can I tell you? It, all I can tell you is that one of these days, I keep working at it. I keep grinding. I keep hoping one of these days, fantasy football is going to work out for me. It might. You I, know? Just, I believe. It's one of those things, right? Like, I know it's your hobby. I know it's a thing that you like spending your time on. I don't know if there's very much future in fantasy football, to be honest with you. I wish you had just gone to law school, you know? You sound like a mom. become a lawyer. Yeah. Right? Made the family proud. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to make it go. I'm going to make a go of it. All right. Well, look, go you got to, you got to live your own life. You got to go your own path. I'm glad you chose the path less traveled by. See, thank you, my friend. we can even go with some Robert Frost on this stream. We do. We got is Bob Frost. We got Bobby receiver? Trees. What's that? I said, is that your selection of wide receiver? Robert, Robert Frost. Yes. I think take Robert I think Frost in the road less traveled by. I think he's the minimum. <laughs> I think he's a, I think he's a practice squad guy that just got called up for the Chiefs and he's a minimum that he's the place. stone like minimum. Yeah, I think he's he might yeah. he might suit up over Juju and dance on the logo this weekend. Fair. I'm uh, actually going to go with a running back though. Okay. Uh and he's been kind of the guy that I've been waving the flag on all season long, and I'm glad that he's had a tremendous second half. Uh, of the season after kind of sputtering out of the start, even though being the most talented back on that team did not mean that it was going to be uh, getting the lion's share of the carries and the targets and the snaps. But Jonathan Taylor has definitely asserted himself in the last few weeks with five touchdowns in the last yep. three weeks, getting the lion's share of the carries. Finally, he's dropped like th he's not dropped. He has not caught about three balls. I think he's been targeted like 39 times and caught 36 of them. Don't fact check me, uh, but it's somewhere in that region. Uh, 7,400 is just too cheap. So as I said before, every one of the high dollar backs, Camara, Henry, uh, Cook, all in ridiculous matchups, right? So like the same goes for Jonathan Taylor. Those guys have more assured floor of volume than Jonathan Taylor does, but Jonathan Taylor still has a really high floor of volume. He's 2K cheaper than the rest of those guys. So I get a little value and it's not like he's got a terrible matchup. He's playing against, uh, the fighting Jacksonville Lawrences right now who are right motivated to not win, even though they're locked in. They're just like, you know what? We're going to sit everybody. Go ahead. Run all over us. That's fine. Says the front office. Obviously the players and the coaches are going to play hard because nobody wants to put bad tape out there. But like Jonathan Taylor has big playability. Like very few other running backs do. He can rip off a 40 yard touchdown run or a 40 yard touchdown pass, as well as getting the volume to do it on a volume basis to get me that hundred yard bonus clearly getting all of the inside the five work uh, at least recently the last three, four, five weeks uh, that he's played, except for the one week where he was close contact. Um, but I love Jonathan Taylor this week at 7,400. Uh, he was on my list as well. Like nice. the call. I mean, like, you, you know, like whatever you, you had me, you had me at Jaguars. Jacksonville has the fourth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Mm -hmm. and They're bad. Yeah. To your, I mean, the volume is there, right? Over 20 yeah. touches is what he's averaging over the last couple of weeks. So, uh, like the call quite a bit as well. I'm down to eleven thousand two hundred dollars mm -hmm. for three spots. My average uh, remaining player is uh, is thirty seven hundred, thirty seven, thirty three. So I got to go cheap here. Got to go cheap, and I'm gonna look at uh, I'm gonna look look at wide receiver here in terms of uh, in terms of super cheap. Uh, he's interesting. No, maybe not. Um, potentially, no. Hmm. Uh, um. Interesting. Okay. Um. Still trying to think. Sort of. Uh, eh, he's interesting too. All right. Um. Let me look here. Uh. Huh. A lot of cheap wide receivers on the slate this week. A lot of cheap wide receivers. I'm sort of looking at. I'm trying to go back and forth on and. Um, yeah, nah, <laughs> no. No. Um, see. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm desperate. Uh, okay, let me. Uh, I'm gonna do. It's 
trying to think. So I'm playing you head to head. So I got to go with um, some floor here. Not necessarily upside. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, You know what? This one does not make me feel great. I'll be honest with you. I like right? to hear that. But yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. Jerry Judy got 15 targets last week. Yeah. Got 15 targets. Mm -hmm. He leads the team in end zone targets. He leads the team in air yards. Raiders have allowed 34 fantasy points per game over the last, I'm sorry, just 34 points per game. Like just the Raiders of defense have allowed 34 points a game over the last six weeks. They just lost their season, like it's over with. Um, Coach King, like I already yeah. have Melvin Gordon. Like I can't believe how many, how many. That's a lot of Broncos. Broncos. It's a lot of Broncos. Yeah, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? You could pick their defense too. <laughs> but give me Jerry Judy for forty two hundred dollars. That was who I, I was going to pick. That was going to be really? my next pick. Yeah. All right, well, good. So then, <laughs> like, I, 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 I jumped on the grenade for you because he, you know, he's gonna suck. Um, but uh, yeah, I just that that matchup, that level of volume. We know he's talented. You know, he's had a couple of games here and there. It's been inconsistent, unfortunately. You know, Drew Locke is a uh, is an adventure, but um, <laughs> that's one way. To at forty two hundred dollars, that volume in that matchup, and where I am in terms of price, I needed to lock in at like a cheap guy. So. I'll go with Jerry Judy. All right. I'm going to go a different direction. Same okay. price. Now, this is the grenade. I thought Jerry Jerry Judy was, I don't know if the right play is the right wording, but, like, I think he's the best cheap player in that range, 4,000 to 4,500. I think that he's got good volume, big upside, uh, probably the safest play in that range. But I'm between two guys right now. Uh, well, let's talk it out. I'll help you decide. <laughs> One of them, again, like you said, how many how many Broncos can you have? Right. How many New York football giants can you have? Darius Slayton, oh. though, getting an awful lot of targets at 4,100. Uh, yeah. with 25 over the last three weeks, squaring off against Dallas, who gives up basically more deep completions and deep touchdowns than any other team in the league. Or I could cash in on some of these Sklansky bucks and go with Miko Hardman with the Chiefs oh. expected to sit literally everybody. That's right. Leaving the electric Miko Hardman on the field. Mm -hmm. And... They'll still find creative ways to get him the ball, not expecting like 12 or 15 targets. But if he gets like seven, eight targets uh, with as well as they're going to get the ball into, you know, get him the ball into space to allow him to create and use his speed against this Chargers defense that is due to the injuries, obviously, has not been as good as the, we expected them to be coming into the season. I've already got a giant at tight end. I'm going to go with the electric one. I know it's a cash game. I know that I want to stack up as much volume as possible, but I think that Hardman gets about as much volume as Slayton gets. Both of them have big home run ability. Uh, give me me Cole Hardman and the possibility for the kick returns as well. So give me me Cole Hardman at 4,200 here, uh, and we'll see where we go. He, he is yours. The only question is, is do they consider him a key starter? I don't think do so. Do they consider him a, uh, a key starter? There's now, a possibility. There's a possibility that he plays, but like, there's only so many guys that they have on the roster. I think that they sit Kelsey. I think they sit Hill. I think they clearly will sit Mahomes uh, and let those other guys run around. Maybe Robinson's the play at wide receiver, but we'll see. We will see. We'll we'll see. Brian, Byron Pringle feels like this is a big Byron. It's a Pringle, Pringle week. week. I'm gonna pop into a can. Just I'm just giving you an idea there. <laughs> Something to think. Of. Okay, so I know how much the defense I want to spend is. Uh, the defense that I'm going to spend on, how much how much I think that is. Um, yeah, your Steelers defense, uh, oh, your bronze defense was a good, good call. I'm really, you know, I'm disappointed that I, uh, that I didn't get that. Didn't I never those, go defense uh, early. I think this is kind of a rare situation. Right. Um, 
So I know how much I want to. So uh, my defense is going to be three thousand dollars. Okay. Um. So now, which means I have four thousand dollars. So now I'm looking through who is available at four thousand uh, dollars to fill in my flex spot. And wow, uh, CJ Ham is out unfortunately because he was a guy that I was thinking of. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, let's see here. Yeah. The thing is by Sunday, we're going to get a lot of these plays, right? There's going to be, right. some, it's 2020. So like every week there's somebody who sits because of close contact every week. There's somebody who sits because, uh, they were injured late in the week. It seems like this is the one year in football, way more so in fantasy football than any other season where like you lit, you, you just lose players, Right. Yeah. On a Friday or a Saturday, we get Shefty bombs at 9 p.m. Pacific every sun, every Saturday night with like, here, here's four guys who are not going to play tomorrow that you have not talked yeah. about all week as being even questionable. Exactly. It's all the more reason why. Um, that's sort of interesting. All right. Um, hmm. I don't see anyone for four thousand dollars that I like. If I'm being honest, mm -hmm. um, I mean, Darius Slayton is out there for forty one hundred. I could just basically bail on my. Um, you uh, could go with Tim Patrick and get another Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to go. I could bail on my defense too, as well, and just um, defense is highly variant. Yeah, exactly. I could just. That's sort of interesting. Um... Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to go with Malcolm Brown. You know what I mean? I just think I'm <laughs> I, gonna just, I, I think he's off the board. See, that's the thing. I think we can just, but yeah, but whatever. I'm setting my life. You don't know. It's fine. <laughs> Who cares? You're the guy in the 13th round of your draft. It's like, hey, is uh, is anybody taking oh, yeah. Lamar Jackson uh, yet? Uh, right. Well, yeah, he's gone. Available? Look lower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look lower on your draft list. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So I know this is fascinating to watch. Um, KJ Hamler also available. Yes, he for is. For your hometown Denver Broncos. For my, <laughs> my beloved <laughs> Denver Broncos. Um, um, um So I wanted to go for four thousand, but let me let me just look something here. Go for it. If I, uh, I'm through. looking up. If I go to forty five hundred, who's available for me at twenty five hundred? There's where always defenses, defenses available. You got the yeah. not the Browns. You got the Raiders, the Falcons, the Broncos, the Broncos, <laughs> the Jets, the that's... Jags, the Lions, the Titans, the Bengals, Damn. and the Texans, who I'm never allowed to draft again. No, of course not. I mean, but the, you know, the Bengals are sort of interesting there. Um, uh, I mean, the Titans at Houston, Houston does give up a lot of sacks, mm -hmm. um, are, are sort of interesting. I'm just sort of going through my defenses, knowing what I'm going to right. have. The Jets at New England are sort of interesting too. Like Jets have, like Jets are what? Jets have won two in a row. Yeah. I mean, like, Legit, like the Patriots offense has looked awful. Bad. The Jets defense has looked better. I better. mean, like, yeah, I mean, get the Falcons at Tampa Bay, it's not great. I mean, the, yeah, the Raiders at Denver. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, like, that's always good, right? Like, I've got two offensive players for the Broncos, yeah. and I'm going to roll it back with uh, Play the defense with the play Raiders against defense. them, yeah. Right? Is that the... Yeah. That, is that is that when when you guys when you DFS guys talk about running it back is that what you mean? We, is that the, we is, call that, is that the optimal. Play? something 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 into the wind. Never do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Um. Uh. Oh God. 
Um, hmm. I don't want them. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's see. Who do you have left? What position do you have left? Is what I'm sitting here sifting through. Quarterback and a flex. Quarterback and a flex. The right play free. Well, I'm not going to be picking a flex in that range, but because you have a right. certain amount to spend. So your your price spend is lower than mine. So like there's nothing that you're going right. to do that's going to take away from the players that I'm looking at in the range that I'm looking at players. All right. Well, what is the range that you're looking at? <laughs> Trying to change the subject? Well, I mean, yeah. if I I've got I've got an average of 6700 remaining. Right. So I'm above your spend level. Like the most you, you can are. spend is 5000. I think the least I'm going to probably spend is somewhere around 5000. So we're right. in, we're in different price ranges here. We are in different price ranges here. Typical. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I could I could go with it, uh, like whatever, two thousand dollar defense, which is uh, um, should be the Texans. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, All right, so um, whatever. Um, <laughs> you've gone. You you're know, going through I'll, all five stages of grief right in front of the I really audience. Am. It's fantastic. I, I really am. I'm, I'm, I hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, all these mods you have. This is are riveting. This up. So it's just not. This whole video isn't just like me going like. Eh, eh. The mods just put um, up a, a prediction into the poll. People are now gambling. Will Barry make his heart out? Yes or no? Yeah, I have literally 60 seconds. So I'm going <laughs> to, so uh, we'll do this, we'll do this, you know what? Um, all right, you know what? Uh, screw it. Here, here's what I'm going to do um, for, because uh, I don't really like anyone at 4,000, mm -hmm. you know? And um, you know what? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. All right. Why not? Whatever. You know, I'm going to go with James Washington, $3,500, played college ball with Mason Rudolph, getting four targets a game. Looks like the Steel if the Steelers are resting Ben, they might rest Deontay, Juju. So maybe James Washington gets some mm -hmm. extra run, a decent matchup. $3,500, James Washington. Okay. So you're going with the shower narrative. Totally yeah. understandable. Yes. Uh, I'm going to take a QB. Okay. Typically, I'll take a running QB in this spot. Sure. That's what I, I did with Kirk Cousins. I think... <laughs> I'm unsure of whether Kyler... Like, because it's it's Wednesday, you know? Yeah. So, like, I there, I don't want to be in a situation where, like, well, we're going to play him for, like, a quarter, and then we're going to sit him because we're kind of locked in and we don't care. Uh but, like, I kind of feel like it's between Tannehill and Brady for me. Right. And I'm going to play the matchup play. <sighs> They're both great matchups. But, like, again, right. Brady's a similar situation. I think I'm just going to go with Tannehill. Uh, with the amount of touchdowns that he's had the last few weeks, uh, both on the ground and through the air. Yes, there's danger with Derrick Henry. Uh, possibly getting a two or three touchdown game. We've seen games like this is kind of a, an anomaly sort of offense where Derrick Henry can eat and have like a 30 point fantasy day. And Tannehill can also have a 30, a 20 to 25 point fantasy day uh, because of how efficient that offense is and playing up against Houston who allows a ton of efficiency as well. Uh, leaving me 6,400 for a flex play. Um, all right. Your defense Fair. at 3,500. I'm sorry. You have a defense left for 3,500 or less. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, what? I'm going to, um, so it's interesting, by the way, our matchup, I believe will come down to that. To the it Titans. could. Like, cause I have Derek Henry, you have Ryan Tannehill. Mm -hmm. It'll literally come to, do they give it to Henry or do they fake it to Henry? And Tannehill does like the, you know, any the Tannehill rushing touchdown is going to have you think, breaking walls in your house yeah you're gonna be punching holes in the wall out. yeah might uh might tear my hair out um <laughs> so my defense is i'll just tell you since i mean you've already picked one and i'm, I'm sitting here trying to decide 
Uh, Patriots are 3,500. They're at home to the Jets, but they're bad. Um, both the Jets and the Patriots defense is bad. I'm looking at the Rams at 3,300 against potentially a backup quarterback or, you know, one-legged Kyler Murray mm -hmm. with something to play for and the defense knowing like, hey, man, Jared Goff ain't walking through that door. We got to we gotta win this on our own. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also, uh, I'm also tempted by uh, the Seahawks for $3,000 as well. No Debo Samuel, um, uh, seat third, third string quarterback. They have something to play for as well. Um, you know, no Iuke as well. Um, but is it bad form to leave 500 bucks left? No, nah. right. 500 or less so, is yeah. always fine. Yeah. It's, so it's Rams or Seahawks for me. Like I could have gone to 4,000 on my flex. I just didn't love any of the 4,000 choices. I'll tell you just for your audience. I was trying to decide whether I go at $4,500 Gronk is out there at $4,500, which I thought was interesting, especially mm -hmm. in the matchup with Atlanta and Dario Gunboale. So we just found out this morning, James Robinson, not going to play on Sunday. Yep. So a good they're playing the Colts. I think there's been obviously a, the Colts defense is still good, but not as good as it has been earlier in the season. And a good just getting a ton of volume. And so, that's key. Uh, huh? That volume yeah. is the, the one thing that you need to focus on the most for many players. Like a good Wale right. going to get all the snaps. Well, you, just like you, did last left, you, could, you have a flex left. You obviously could go for a good but whatever you also have, you can go up in the 6,000s, you yeah. know, like, I'm guessing you're not going to go down that. I have 6,400 remaining. Right, exactly. So if you left over two thousand dollars remaining, that would be that awful. would be suboptimal. Somebody that'd be that'd be suboptimal for a guy that has his own Twitch channel, his own <laughs> mod, you know, that is a you know a supposed expert in this stuff. Expert. Um, always in air quotes with the expert. Always in air quotes with the expert here. You know what? Seahawks have done nine or more fantasy points in DraftKings for five straight. No IU, no Debo Samuel, um, CJ Beathard, third string uh, quarterback. Seahawks do have something to play for. I'm locking in the Seahawks. Boom. Boom shakalaka. There you go. I got to go. Make your last pick and let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. 6,400. I'm going to go with the other side of that. And I'm going to go with Chris Carson at 6,200. The volume has been kind of up and down. I think that he finds his way into the end zone this week uh, against that San Francisco defense. There's a couple of other plays that I could have made here. I could have gone with Corey Davis for correlation. I could have gone with Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, but really, it just comes down to I want Chris Carson in that spot, getting me a ton of volume. Hopefully all of our guys go. If they don't, if somebody is labeled out before the weekend gets here, we are able to swap my team, Tannehill, Brown, Taylor, Samuel, Adams, Hardman, Engram, and Carson with the Browns defense, Matthews team, Kirk Cousins, Gordon, Henry, Gallup, Ridley, Judy, Smith Jr., Washington, and the Seahawks. You had to get somebody named Washington in your team. That was just, that was a given. Uh, Obviously. You all know where to find Matthew. ESPN on all Twitter platforms, uh, Matthew Berry TMR. Uh, Matthew, thank you for joining us. I'm on, I'm on all forms of social media as Everyone. at Matthew Berry TMR, except the Fantasy Life app where I'm merely at Matthew Berry. Awesome. Go download the Fantasy Life app. Go follow Matthew everywhere as if you didn't already and look for another video right here. He's a legend.